how I learned about proper hygiene as a plus size girly. Growing up, I was always self-conscious about the way that I smelt because I was a swimmer growing up. I had practiced twice a day and I always smelt like chlorine, which isn't a bad thing, but it also isn't a good thing now thinking about it. My mom was always plus size as well and she had some tips that helped, but most of the time I kind of came across these tips on my own. I'm calling big cap on that, dude. Nobody ever in my entire life, I've never heard anybody ever say, I don't want to smell like chlorine. Usually when people say I have a problem with my smell, they're referring to things like body odor or they're referring to like amoebas growing on your person, which is okay. Like people, I remember when I was like 14 years old and I hit puberty. I don't know what age exactly I hit puberty. I was kind of like a weird bloomer. I know how some people say like you're a light bloomer where you hit puberty when you're like 16 or something like that, which I knew a few people that did have that problem. And people would get made fun of for that. Like, I remember one kid that would literally come into school, and every day he would talk, you would hear like a, oh, kind of thing. And it was really, really cringy. But it didn't matter. You know, everybody has their time in the, everybody has their time in the sun. And I know when I hit puberty, my armpit hair didn't grow in until like three years after I initially, uh, uh, like when I first hit puberty. So it was like really weird for me personally. But um, I know that when I hit puberty, dude, my nutsack smelled really bad for like a long period of time. And I didn't even know, like I had no idea because like nobody tells you this. And I didn't grow up with like a man in the house. So, like nobody told me that, like how to properly cleanse myself and stuff like that. I remember like literally when I was like 14 years old. Um, I spent like an entire summer just playing Modern Warfare 2. This was like Apex days, okay? This is like the days where uh, you would go on and people would just tell you like, hey, your mom is a, a slut. She's a whore. She's not a virgin. And also I'm nine years old and your mom was like sucking me off. You know, that's what people would say to each other. It was like a constant... Uh, it was like a constant match of like who can one up each other and I would always win I would always win because it would take years and years and years of Developing my shit talking ability that now like I'm, I'm pretty much unfazed by almost anything at all And if you want to talk shit about my mom, well first of all my mom's a virgin, okay? She's a pure-hearted virgin. What is your mom? I bet your mom had, had sex at one point, right? Yeah, that's what I thought your mom had sex gross disgusting I'm an immaculate conception, but I know that um, nowadays I don't have that problem anymore because I cleanse myself thoroughly and I use Dove, um, Dove soap bars. I use the bars and I clean myself with cloths and stuff like that. And I, you know, I really do clean properly and I brush my teeth and I, you know, brush my, my whole appendages body and I wash my hair, what I have left of it. So yes, absolutely. Um, when you're, when you're a young person it is very difficult to properly cleanse yourself because maybe you just don't have the expertise and like maybe the genre of person that's telling you how to clean yourself is just maybe not from that particular genre that it is now. Now, um, yeah, it's just like really weird. Like I remember one time I met this really, really old lady and she was telling me that she literally used to put the bars of soap in her vagina. And I remember I was like, I don't know if that's like sanitary. Like, I don't know if you're like, is that normal? Are you supposed to do that? And she was like, yeah, all women should do that. Like, it's normal. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. And then I asked like another girl. She was like, oh, yeah, don't do that. And I remember like literally being at a time frame where I thought, because you know how you put chapstick on your lips to properly moisturize up and stuff like that I'm, I'm friends with black guys so i have vaseline but normal people right they use chapstick i i thought one time because i was like watching a pornography and there was like a really really delectable lady and she had put um it was like a lesbian i think and one lady was like coating her vagina with chapstick and it was cherry blossom and in the background you heard that like katy perry song you know the taste of her cherry chapstick and it was like a play on things you know because like it's not actually the taste of her cherry chapstick on her lips but it was her lips but not actually her lips so it was kind of like funny um but then somebody told me that's like not good and they can like actually put you in shock or something like that or i don't know like envelop a UTI or something like you just like grow bread in your vagina I don't know man the woman anatomy is actually kind of crazy I have no idea how it works sometimes um sometimes I think that maybe my life would be easier if I was homosexual but then I realized that I don't really enjoy phallus in any really significant way with the exception of like bananas I guess and you know but that's not like me imagining penis or anything like that but anyway when I first started learning about proper hygiene when I was in my teenage years I thought if I used great smelling products they're gonna make me smell great. I one of my problems with like really good smelling products is that for me personally, I get headaches from those products. Like I'm when I'm around ladies and ladies have perfumes and they spray themselves a lot, man. Oh my god, it's just it's so terrible for me because if you are the type of person that sprays a lot of it, um, it's like you just gotta leave my room, you gotta leave my house. I just can't have you in here because you are. It's like literally intoxicating for me. I need everything in my house. It, it, there's no scented candles. I don't give a fuck about that shit. I'm not Jewish. Uh, there, there's no like Febreze canisters. I don't like that shit. I wash my house with like, um, Lysol. That's what I use. Okay, I use the purple Lysol. 
and that goes away within 20 minutes and I'm okay with like 20 30 minutes of you know the smell but I can't do one two three hours of your terrible disgusting koala scent that you got from East Europe that has pandas infused inside of it and like you know Tropicana pudding or something I don't know like there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that I, I just don't like it. and um yeah personally me personally I don't like, like when I wear cologne it like makes me actually um like I have a headache and I can't do it so anyway I was wrong her eyes are I beautiful colleges they, when I... they kind of look like don't they her, I don't think she's got these got to be some fake eyes right like she's coating these up with it's like this got to be like a filter or like a contacts maybe I feel like filters are just basically new age contacts except they don't actually work in real life but uh yeah this is not real right she looks like has gecko eyes or something like that I actually really just don't like the can I change this yeah I have a new light in my room so I'll just change it to that is this better can somebody let me know really was like wait a minute I need to really think about my skincare and hygiene routine and that's you know what I don't understand about a lot of these people is that they'll say that they have to focus on their skincare and hygiene when you're fat as fuck and I always think like okay like it's good. You should focus on your skincare. You should try to improve the scents that, that aromate off your body. Like, that's awesome. I do agree with that. But I also think you're like 350, right? So why do you why are you caring so much about these little details when the big details are the ones you should be addressing first, right? Am I wrong on that? That'd be like somebody like focusing on the color of their car when the car itself is like literally dog water. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, actually get a quality car and then focus on the paint after it's like a good car. Like, I don't understand why so many of these people prior prioritize the things that are like menial things that have absolutely nothing to do with the overall package of your body like absolutely smell good smell better smell the delicioso and all this other stuff but dude you're 350 you're dying and like by the time you're 40 anyway you know like shouldn't you get that out of your shouldn't you be like addressing that first and foremost in my opinion i don't know it just seems kind of weird dude you know what i'm talking about when I came across it's like it's like if, if somebody was like going down on you and they were about to like eat you out or like suck you up and they started like braiding your pubic hair like what are you doing dude like you had one job and now you're like grabbing all my pubic hair dude. A little thing called antibacterial soap my freshman year crazy back then I was still a swimmer and I learned that antibacterial soap covers the smell of chlorine or it gets you know what it really kind of makes me sad is when people say things like oh I used to be a swimmer I used to do this I used to do that and I understand like as you get older we become more and more sedentary. And it's really sad because it's like, I'm not even talking about older in the sense of like 20, 30 years past when you graduated from high school. No, I'm literally talking like five years, five, six years after high school or even college. People are literally life-changing things where you're super aerobic, you're doing a lot of exercises, and then suddenly you have an office job and you're no longer like outside anymore and you're ordering Uber Eats 24-7. And you've given up this like major part of your life that gave you a lot of joy and a lot of like satisfaction. But because you no longer have an opportunity to do that anymore, it's just not like, it's not, uh, it's not imperative to you. And it's really, really sad because um, I know you really enjoy doing that stuff. And it may not be like that big of a deal for somebody that like already plays games inside all day. Maybe like if they're just like playing World of Warcraft all day inside, like, okay, fine, whatever. But for a lot of people, you know, if you're playing like baseball, if you're like Mexican, you play baseball or you're black and you play football or you're white and you play lacrosse. Like there's a lot of things that you can do that are really, really fun that you don't do anymore because you're an adult and being an adult means that you can't go outside, which is gay. Like, no, you should want to go outside. It's okay to go outside. And I feel like as adults, we need to find opportunities in ways that we can incorporate things like that in our day-to-day -day life because there's no way that we're going to be able to get those things through like they're not going to be imbued upon you purposefully you have to actually find those things and do it yourself like as a child as a kid as a, like even a kid in college or whatever there, there are programs and you're almost incentivized to do that stuff but when you get out of college Nah, there's like, is nothing anymore. It's like, there's no like meeting up and like go and play basketball. You have to, you have to actually go about it out of your way to find opportunities to do that, which is one of the reasons why so many people are so incredibly fat because it's, I don't think that they're fat because of the lack of exercise. I think it's, they're fat because they don't have a reason to exercise. If that makes any sense. Like, it's not like, the exercise in and of itself is not what's the lack of exercise is not making you fat. It's just you don't have a reason to use your body anymore. So therefore, if I have no reason to use my body, it doesn't matter if I gain an extra 100 or 200 pounds on my frame. Why does it matter? I'm not going to be walking for long distances anyway. I take Ubers everywhere I fucking go or I, I, I have Uber Eats come to my house. And like because these these big these big food companies like Ubers and uh, DoorDashes and all this other stuff, like they're booming right now when it comes to the amount of money that they're making, dude. And people are just staying inside all day and it got to suck it's got to suck like a lot of big fat hairy camel dicks that you're giving up like parts of your life that are that were really important to you because 
you know, you, can't, you don't have opportunities for that anymore. And it's really sad. It hurts me. It's rid of the smell of chlorine. And I was like, this is gold. I don't think that it's, I don't know why she's focusing so much on the chlorine. And like the problem here, right, is that even if you are going to talk about the chlorine part, because you were a swimmer for like a good portion of your life, now that you're an adult and you've already told me that you haven't swam in like 10 plus years, why are you still using the antibacterial soap if the reason you used it initially was because, oh, I was smelling like chlorine. Can we just be honest for a second? It was the musk. You 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 you, you were using it because it was covering up the smell of the musk. It was getting rid of it was getting rid of the amoebas, the growths, the humans, the civilizations that were growing on your body. Don't act like I'm sure the chlorine was a problem, but I've never entire my entire life I've never heard anybody say because chlorine isn't inherently like a really really bad smell. I know a lot of people that like walk around smelling like weed 24 seven and they think that's like a totally okay thing to do, which by the way is not okay to do. I don't care what anybody says. I literally, like two days ago, I was walking down the street like Arthur, and I, I, these, this couple, right, this couple, this guy and this girl walked by me, dude, and oh my god, it was like, it smacked me in the mouth, like I walked by, like, da, 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 and it just like hit me, and I was like, oh, oh, like I swear that shit was, like in my throat, it was deep, it was hard, it was untasty, I didn't like it at all, I don't know how so many people can just walk around with that, with that, with that smell, on, on your body, dude, it's not a good smell. And I get it, it's legal. Smoke your weed, hashtag 420. But, bro, it smells terrible. It's not a good aroma. I don't know how so many people can like walk around as if like this is the one smell that they want to be known for. There are plenty of other smells. Like, I'd rather you walk around and smell like tires or like wood chips. That would be way better than smelling like weed the entire day. That's gross. But some people will live and die by that smell. This is the jackpot. Like, I did some more research on antibacterial soap. And I basically learned that it's very similar to soaps that they use in when you go in for surgeries to make sure that there's no bacteria on you. And in my head, I was like, how does this, how does this work? Like, it's soap. Uh, I don't know, like, what, why you're even investigating, like, big, these, these soaps. Like, I've never, like, I don't I'm sorry, dude, but this is, like, so weird to me. Um, maybe it's like really important for you to find those like really good ingredients in, in your particular for it's one of the great things about being a dude is that I don't have to worry about that because I can cede that responsibility over to somebody that knows about that stuff, usually women. And I can go, Hey, you've done like literally four years of research on soaps and like skincare and stuff like that. Tell me what I should do for my skin. And they'll go, here's what you should do, David. And I go, thank you so much. And if they ever need help with buying like a computer or buying like a big giant TV, or I don't know, like measure measurements on certain things because as you know us boys have giant measurement sticks all the time you know for what and you think I'm lying I don't have it with me but there's a measuring tape part over there it would have been cool if I could pull it out but I don't have it here and I'm not gonna like run across the room but there's there's give and takes and not everybody's gonna be like really really good at everything and I think it's like totally okay to find somebody that knows what they're doing on certain things it's like going to a mechanic like not everybody's gonna know how to fix their car not everybody's gonna know how to fix their sink not everybody's gonna know how to fix their pipes and you know who does? The mechanic. You know who does? The plumber. You know who does? The fucking carpenter. There are plenty of guys and people out there that will be able to do this shit because they have expertise in that and don't feel bad because you don't know how to do something. Now, granted, you could probably learn how to do it, but if it's not like important to you and it's not like the be all end all for you to learn how to do this shit, don't feel like you're a bad person for not looking up a 17 hour documentary on how to properly fix a light fixture because your shit no it's okay to just hire a guy for 30 bucks or 40 bucks to come over and you know fix your shit i don't know like don't feel bad about it like it's okay to seed over those things to other people like how is this getting rid of the chlorine and i realized i was like chlorine is like chemical so using antibacterial soap gets rid of everything That's that doesn't even make sense that is the most this woman is trying so hard to make it seem like the chlorine is the biggest problem that chlorine is chemicals and therefore this is getting rid of everything is the most nonsense thing that I've heard this woman say so far. Why does that even, what did, what did even, what did you even accomplish by saying that statement? Chlorine is chemicals and the soap is getting rid of chemicals. Okay. Yeah. That's, I mean, I thought you were going to go with like the nitty gritty of this, but you just, I, that was the most surface level shit I've ever heard in my life. As I got older, my freshman year, I really like experimented with the antibacterial soap. I, first of all, dude, we got to calm down. Okay. We got to really, really calm down. Cause anytime somebody ever says I was in college and I experimented, you're, it's usually a penis involved. There's usually some lesbian shit going on, maybe double ended dildos, anal beads, lubes, and things such and so forth. Never in my entire life is never. You're not supposed to say that. You can't say I was experimenting with antibacterial soap. What? 
in my mind, I'm getting a whole bunch of weird ideas. And maybe that's because my mind is like fundamentally fucked because I've been watching porn and stuff like a really young age or whatever. But I wouldn't be surprised. I've seen women put like corn on the cob in their vagina. Like I remember literally watching a video of a woman and it was like a black guy cookout. You know those things. And this woman showed up and these black guys were like, damn girl, you thicker than a bowl of oatmeal and shit. That's real cool. And she was like, you know it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, let me see what I can do. And he pulled out the corn of the cob on the, but it wasn't cooked or anything like that. It was like a prop corn. And he was like, yeah, girl, let me see what I can do with this or whatever. And it was like four of the black guys around there. And they were all eating like, I don't know, ribs and shit in the background while this girl was like getting penetrated by a corn on the cob or this random black guy or whatever. To me, it just kind of seemed like a really weird video. But, you know, sometimes you just kind of go on the Pornhub app just to see, not the app. I don't think there is an app. Is there? Sometimes you go on Pornhub and you see like you just scroll through the first initial page or two and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Usually you see like big busty Latinas or whatever um, and, and maybe you click on that. I personally don't like to watch anything with men in it. So I'm not really down for that, but I did watch that one because I was like, this is ridiculous, right? This is crazy, but it did happen. A woman did have a corn in her vagina. I don't know if that's like appropriate to anybody, but um, I don't, I don't, it depends on the corn, right? And like, I don't know how sanitary it is personally, but I've seen weirder, I've seen weirder things, you know, man or woman. I don't know. What are we even talking about, dude? Um, yeah, experimenting with antibacterial soap. That's what that's the impression I got. It's rid of everything. As I got older, my freshman year, I really like experimented with the antibacterial soap. And I realized that I don't need to use it on my entire body. Like I can use it on the areas that I don't want any bacteria to grow, meaning I don't want it. Bro, what are you doing? What are you talking about right now, dude? This is what I didn't I don't have to use soap on my entire body because it's I remember I knew a dude. I do a woman, right? And this girl was like, I was like, oh, well, how often do you shave your vagina? Because, you know, you talk about that sometimes with a girl that maybe you care about. And she was like, oh, um, I don't shave. And I was like, that's a lie because we've had sex and I saw your vagina and it was like smooth. It was like baby smooth. And she was like, yeah, I use Nair. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. OK, yeah, I know what Nair is like. It's that lotion shit that you can like throw on your body and just like wait like 15 minutes and then like scrub it off and then you don't have hair anymore. Like I get it. But I've never heard anybody ever use it on their vagina. And she was like, oh, I just don't like shaving. She was a little bit plumper. So it was kind of hard for her to get in there. She was like, I don't really like shaving. And this is like really easy for me. And it is kind of uncomfortable to put it on my vagina sometimes. And I was like, what, what do you mean it's like uncomfortable to put it on your vagina? She was like, oh, well, it burns. It like there's like a burning sensation. It feels like my vagina is on fire. For like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes or however long I need to put it on there. And, but it's okay because like the hair doesn't grow back for like more days or whatever. It's just like way better than like 15 minutes of discomfort for like extra three, four days of no hair growth. Like, yeah, obviously I'm going to do that. And then I remember like, I, I didn't think it was like a problem at the time because I kind of assumed that like vaginas were kind of the same thing as like penises where penises are just kind of like durable as hell. Like you can't really fuck up a penis. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like you swing it around. You can like, you know, slap it on your hand or whatever, like a mallet. And I've even seen guys like, you know, bungee cord with that shit. Right. And, um, but I remember I was talking to women and I was like, I told them that story and they were like, oh yeah, no, don't do that. That's terrible. That's gross. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You can like literally get like, you can go in shock and like you can literally get infections and things. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I don't know what the fucking, I don't have a vagina. You know, like I shouldn't know about this, right? Like, you know, sometimes I think I shouldn't be the, I shouldn't be the person that has to bestow upon these people the information that is your vagina, right? Because I've talked to many women. I remember one time, dude. <sighs> I remember one time this girl had, I had met this girl and she was like, she was telling me she had a UTI or no, no, she had a yeast infection, right? But she didn't have health insurance. So she had to put, she, she looked up like a, a video or like a tutorial on how to get rid of a yeast infection, a home remedy or whatever. She found this like hidden ancient fucking Mesopotamian, how to get rid of yeast infections from like back 2000 BC or whatever. And she like tied a piece of string to a garlic clove and like put it into her vagina and it was – she did it for like a few days, right? She fun, She took out the, the, the garlic and redid it and put another clove up there. And after – it's actually kind of crazy to say this, but like after two, three, four days, um, I almost couldn't believe this, but nothing happened. Not only did nothing happen, but her vagina was seasoned up, but it's not like I was going to ever do anything with it because it was yeasted up. It was like yogurt or something like that. So I guess like seasoned up yogurt. But – um. I remember even at the time, I was like, are you sure you should do this? Like, are you sure this is like something you should do? You know, me with my manly brain, I feel like I shouldn't even be questioning this, but she had like no problem with it. But then later on, people have told me that you're not supposed to do that. So, okay. 
to smell, meaning coochie, armpits, under boobs, wherever I felt it needed. Because there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria in your body. It's kind of like... Sure, but I don't think anybody's ever said, like, I have really good bacteria in my armpits. I don't think anybody's ever said that. Like, I have really, got, I have really good bar bacteria in my taint, bro. Like, right, 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 right next to my butt cheeks, bro. Oh, the bacteria is so good. It's so tasty. You want to come over and check it out, bro? It's that Gouda. Like, if you're a girl, you got a coochie. She's her own ecosystem. Good bacteria. Oh, okay, yeah, I see what they're saying. Okay, yeah, with the vagina. Yeah, the vagina, like, it has its own, like, uh metamorphosis cycle or whatever it's it's like the the flavors of the sun or whatever i don't know you need some bad bacteria so learning to just use the antibacterial soap on specific parts really helped improve my hygiene tmi um when i was younger i used to get really bad like utis yeast infections but it was because i was a swimmer and i was sitting in a wet bathing suit for hours hours sometimes and that's what helped it and you want to know what like back then thinking about it i was like maybe that's why my coochie smelled the way that it did Damn. i just thought it was the way that my coochie smelled no girl you had issues going on down there what does it smell like then like uh like nickels right doesn't it smell like nickels almost it's so weird when people tell you because like i remember literally going to high school and dudes was like yeah man i was like in that bitch dog like i was sleeping in the pussy bruh and you go like, for real, dude? That's crazy, bro. And they would always test you. You'd be like, yeah, dog, I, I fuck so many bitches. And then you'd be like, you're lying. You're lying. You don't fuck no bitches. And they go like, yeah, dog, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And they'd be like, you're lying. Tell me what it tastes like then. And it's like, there's no definitive like way to, because you're going to lose regardless. That's a that's that's a trick question, right? Because it doesn't matter what you say. Because like, for instance, this guy was like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, it tastes like, yeah, it tastes like, uh, like it, you know, licking a sheet of metal. And the other guy was like, nah, your girl's gross, bro. Your girl's gross. My girl smell. My girl's on that juicy fruit, bro. My girl got that fucking juicy fruit shit, bro. That Starburst. My girl's pussy is on some different shit, dog. Your girl got that fucking stench shit. Your girl got that Sasquatch. Your girl got that jungle book between her legs, bro. She got Tarzan swinging down there, dog. You ain't got no... Your girl is gross. And then if you that girl went to school, then everybody had known that your girl had jungle book. And that's what they would tell them, like, damn, so and so. And they would say that they they would say that your boyfriend said it, because technically he did, but he didn't really say that. But like, yo, Travis, your boyfriend last like two two days ago when we were at the lunch table, he said your vagina smelled like ketchup. And then she'd be like, what? Ketchup? And he'd be like, yeah. He said that you got to put like dryer sheets in between your legs to like satisfy the the stench, the grossness. The absolute, the terribleness between your, your legs. And then it would start a whole big conflict. And, you know, he couldn't actually deny it because if he did, then his boys would make, maybe make her feel bad about it. Like, nah, you a bitch, dog. You a bitch because you lying now. Or whatever. You know how it is, man. Whatever. But uh, to me, um, I've, I've only had sex with three, four, 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 four people. All women. Not men. Not men. Not men. And it's like assortment of a change. It's like change. You know, it's like uh nickels pennies quarters maybe um but like maybe a half a dollar it's usually like around that right um i've never once heard a dude go like man i love eating girls out because of the flavor like maybe you're in the moment maybe in the moment you're like damn it's so good because you're like a savage you know what i'm talking about like you're like a mm, you're like a caveman almost like you have no or you you have it's just working off urges like you have no you have no idea about society anymore or like how the way how the way the world should work and maybe for about 15 minutes you're like really deep into that and then maybe you come to the realization you're like wait a minute this has eggs in it and then you realize like what am i doing dude and then you stop and then you lose your erection then you go to the bathroom and try to slap your shit up and then try to come back in and perform but you probably can't because um because now you're thinking about the egg sack and stuff Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Whatever, dude. Let's keep. Let's continue. And you want to? I'm not ashamed to talk about that because I was a teenager. I was learning things about my body, and now as a 24 year old, I look back on it. You're 10 years. You're 24. 24 what? 24 what? What do you mean 24? You're 24. This woman's 24, bro. Huh. I'm so I got to hold up, bro. How many you know how many times I've watched videos like this and people say I'm I'm 20 this, I'm 20 that, and I go there's no way you're 20, bro. You have kids. Like you you're 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 in your mid 30s at, at, at the least. Like what do you mean you're in your How are you in your 20s? Are we lying right now? Is she in her fucking 20s? Bro, why is it not changing? Is this woman in her fucking 20s? Can somebody let me know? 
is how how is this woman in her twenties? Bro, I, I I thought this was like a full blown mother. Damn. Okay. All right, dude. Twenty four. Damn, bro. You ain't even halfway. Oh, man, you gotta do something about that weight, dude. That's a problem, bro. Twenty four. Damn. Years ago, I was going into high school. I've grown so much and I've learned so That's not a good thing though. If you're growing outwards instead of like mentally. Much about my body since then. So I'm not ashamed to talk about things that I went through in the past. It's fine to talk about the things that you went through in the past. Like I don't think you should have shame with things that you have done unless it's like shameful. Like if you were in like a bathroom one day and there was a glory hole and you were like, I wonder what would happen if I just put my mouth on that shit real quick. And then, you know, you're like, uh, uh, you know, somebody like shoved something right in your mouth or whatever. And it was musty then probably be ashamed. But um, it's okay to talk about your experiences and maybe things that you think are shameful because you're just having power over those things. But um, the way that you're talking about this stuff is almost kind of like you haven't evolved from it almost. I'm not the only one that's gone through the same thing because I've thought about it That's too. a really weird way of going. Like to sit there and like, I remember I used to have that same thought process because like when I was in school, right? High school specifically, I sucked really hard. But it's not because I didn't, it's not because like I was bad at high school. It was more so like, it was more so like I didn't want to do it. I just didn't like school at all. Like I, I I, thought it was like a complete waste of my time. I wasn't getting like anything out of it. I just wasn't seeing any value into it. And I was like failing like all my classes, like all the time. And I did, I barely went in. It was like fucking terrible, dude. And um, I remember I would like come into school, right? And I didn't do my homework the night before because I, again, I felt no value in doing this fucking homework. And um, I remember when they would ask for the, the, the homework, I'd be like, oh, I probably am not the only one. Like, I'm obviously there are pl there are probably like ton of ton of other people that haven't done their homework, just like me. So um, it's gonna be like it's almost kind of like lessening or dampening the blow, almost like um, rolling with the punches. But then it turned out that everybody had done their homework, and I was the only one. And then I was just sitting there like, oh well, shit. I guess this didn't fucking work. So even if that was the case though, it doesn't take away from the fact that you're doing something wrong. You should at least acknowledge that like, this is a problem, dude. Like, you know, like, yeah, there might be other people that have this issue, but dude, like that doesn't take away from the fact that it's your issue. It's your problem. Like just because somebody else or multiple somebody else's are having that issue doesn't mean that your issue isn't lesser. Too. I've sat down in class and I went, whew, What's that smell? That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, dude. Damn. But it's all right. It's all right. It happens, you know? Um, as long as it's better now. Oh, wait, that's me. And you get embarrassed and you get frustrated. But now as a 24-year-old... I cannot believe this woman is 24, bro. That's crazy. I, if you had asked me before she had said that and you were like, David, how old do you think this woman is? I would have said like 34, 35, 36. Like I, I would have easily said that age because to me, she doesn't look like she's in her 20s. And I'm not even trying to be like disrespectful or mean or anything like that. She just looks older. I can say that I have my hygiene routine down to a T. I had a very hard time accepting. That's great that you have your hygiene tech. <sighs> These people are like inducing more problems upon themselves than I feel like they need to have. Like, I'm really happy that you have your hygiene down pack, but you do realize that you're probably inducing like a good 20 or 30% extra hygiene more so on your, on your body. Like more, you're, you're inducing more problems to, to, to evaluate. You know what I'm talking about? To, to avail, to come up with a solution for, you know that, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's great that you have your shit down pack, but you, you have to, to a certain degree, being fatter, you do you do realize, you've, you've said this at the very beginning of your video, you're going to have more problems. So, I mean, it's great that you have it down packed, but like, you, you know, like you could have less of those problems if you just didn't have the weight, but all right. Like I kept my hygiene routine, like kind of like a secret because even as like a, tw like me turning 22, I was like, I don't know if people experience this kind of stuff. Like. I, I'm a bigger girl. Yeah, no, I experienced this too, bro. I remember literally being in school and people would tell me like, bro, people, I remember seeing those like commercials on TV where the kids would have cancer or whatever. They'd be like bald and these kids would be like dying, right? Cause cancer. And then I remember people would be like, oh, David, when it like, what is your sign or whatever? Cause I didn't know what my sign was at the time. I was like, I don't fucking know. I'm born here. And they were like, oh yeah, you're a cancer. And I was like, I was like, what? What do you mean? I'm a cancer. What are you talking about? And they were like, oh yeah. Um, you know, Philip is like a Gemini you know, Elizabeth's like a uh, uh, fucking Scorpio and you're, you're cancer, you're cancer. And I was like, so as I, was like, I was like, oh, okay. But I was like thinking about, cause nobody had a problem with it. So I was like, so like, am I dying? Like, am I just going to die tomorrow? Like, what are you talking about? 
So, like, am I just going to die? But I didn't ask anybody because I kind of thought, like, everybody was just cool with it, right? So, like, a good, like, three years of my life, I just kind of, like, assumed that I was going to die. Like, I just kind of knew that I was, like, okay, well, I just, like, got to make today, like, the best day ever because, like, I'm probably going to die because people are telling me I'm cancer. So, I'm fucking dead, right? Like, it's what it is. And I, for a really long time, I didn't know that that was a thing because I didn't know what signs were, you know? So, I just kind of assumed that it was just, like, I, I just have cancer. Well, like, I don't have any plus size friends like i don't i'm, I'm the there's like group chats though right like you can find like discord group chats or like reddit like there's reddit communities of like fat girl summers or whatever and i'm sure that you could find like other communities where it's like hey you know i'm fat i got like major i got civilizations growing in my belly button help me out i'm sure there will be people out there trying to exterminate that too biggest there is and so it's not like i could go to another plus size girl and be like hey um do you have some odor in there? Damn. Like, I'm getting an odor, but I couldn't do that. But that's how I thought in my head. And instead of just having a conversation with me, why don't you just like not be a plus size girly then? Like, I don't know, man. These people just always have these issues. And I just think like, dude, you can just not have them. My closest friends and be like, yo, do sometimes like your coochie smell or do sometimes like your booby smell. Like, yeah, girls, you know, bro, listen, okay. I used to think for a really long time that girls are like superior when it came to physical care and they are in the sense that like most of the time girls are better in terms of taking care of themselves but they have more problems because if you have boobs then odds are that if you're if you have because I don't have any boobs right that means that you probably have overlap skin on skin and I don't have that so there's probably gonna be sweat build up especially if it's hotter and the same thing with like vaginas like vaginas are like open egg sacs right so like yeah naturally there's gonna be a smell there too but for like dudes like the only thing we have to wor really worry about is uh we just have a butthole which is like the worst thing i guess and sure like your meat could probably smell bad but like i feel like if your meat smells bad then you're fucking terrible at just taking basic showers like i feel like if a guy smells bad then that means that he has to do he's literally doing less than the bare minimum to to even take care of himself right and that's like crazy to me sometimes when i think about that because I think, like, this girl is literally night and day, like, alleviating all of her symptoms and problems in the most extreme way possible. And you smell worse than her. And you don't even have half of the stuff she has to worry about. That's crazy. All you have to do to cleanse yourself is, like, hop in the shower with a bar of soap for five minutes. And you'll be better. You'll be good. But you somehow still manage to smell like a bag of oranges that have been left out in the sun for 45 minutes. Like, it's – I just – sometimes I just cannot believe the amount of no work guys are willing to not do. Like, it's – I don't know. I don't know, Barrel. It's just – it hurts me sometimes. What What's the deal with this? And that's why I kind of started creating these hygiene videos because – you shouldn't be ashamed to talk about what's going on with your body with anyone around you, like your best. I don't know about that. Uh, not anybody around you. There are some people that you probably shouldn't be talking about this with, like your grandmother, maybe like your, you know, like the the cashier at your local supermarket. Probably not her. Probably not them. You know, I, there are plenty of people that you probably shouldn't be talking about it with. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, your friends, family. I maybe some people on TikTok, sure, but like not not the cashier, not the cashier. Um, probably not your therapist. Mm, I could think of probably a good amount of people that you could talk about this with, but not anybody. Definitely not anybody. That's a really, that's a crazy ass statement. You shouldn't be ashamed to talk about what's going on with your body with anyone around you, like your best friends, your doctor, the internet as I do. Well, I mean, the internet's kind of touchy. The internet's a little bit touchy. I think that there are certain things that you can talk to the internet about, but then there are other things that you probably shouldn't because people will latch on. So like, if, for instance, if you made a video and you're like, guys, guess what? My vagina is literally stench right now. Like I got that fucking... I got that Kuna Matata shit going on right now. That shit is like, my shit is drippy. My shit is literally leaking out the side or whatever. One of my vagina lips is touching my kneecap. Um, you know, it just really doesn't smell the best. Like, I don't really even know. Like, sometimes I'd just be sitting here and I'd be thinking like, and I'd get up and then my chair is just like completely falling apart somehow. It's a brand new chair. And then when I walk into a room, I hear like that, mm, you know, you're hearing that probably people are not going to be taken to that kindly. There are probably going to be people that are going to be mean. And that's the nature of the internet. You say almost anything, people are going to have a problem with it. But certain things, like I'm not saying she's doing a bad thing. Like I think that this is necessary for a lot of people, which is really, really great. I think this is good content. I think I really do. And I think most of the content that's on the internet is good content because it's like, 
even if it's not something that's like valuable to you necessarily, I feel like some people could find it valuable. So I'm not even going to hate on the fact that she's making these videos. I just think that a lot of the stuff that she's saying could be alleviated by the fact that she, if she just lost weight, but if she doesn't want to lose weight and she wants to stay fat, which is fine. Um, this is okay. This is fine for people that are fatter and need this information. So a freak autistic girl who rambles about her interests has 30 billion weird kinks does exist by the way. It's just that she's usually a little fat, so nobody wants to hear it. Not many people want to hear about your kinks in general, because, like, most people nowadays have really, really, really weird kinks, because we've all started watching porn very, very young. So, it always starts off, like, really, really okay at the very beginning, right? Like, everybody watches basic, you know, heterosexual sex, which is, like, man and women, right? It's crazy I have to even say that, but it is like that, right? And then you go, hmm... I don't really, I don't really like this anymore. You know, I've been watching like heterosexual sex for like three days. Uh, let me, let me go. What? Let me see what else there is. And you start investigating. You see the regular stuff, lesbian, gay, and then you see other things. You see glory holes, and then you see guys just sitting down in park benches with their dicks out. And then you go into some weird shit, like women farting on cakes. And then suddenly you're a fucking weirdo. And it happens just like that. And that I am 100% confirmed that the reason why so many women that I've met think that 10 inches is default is because they only watch pornography of guys with like BBCs or BBC juniors, which BBC junior is anything below eight inches. So if you got like seven point, mm, I say about 7.9, then that's a BBC junior. That's, that is what that is, all right? And But if you got eight and above, that's a BBC. And this goes from the black guy or white guy or whatever guy that you are. If you got above eight inches, um, then you got that you got that BBC. Now, if you got more than 10 inches, you rock a what, omega level BBC. That's some craziness. But most of the time, whenever I talk to women, it's almost always, not always, but I met a lot of women that are like, mm, if you don't got 10 inches, I cannot be satisfied. I need the bigness. I need the massiveness. I need that big long John Silver you got. And it's not practical for a lot of men. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not even that. 30, by the way, it's not a flex to say that you got 30 billion weird kinks. It's always kind of like concerning when you meet somebody and then you ask them because you know when you first start meeting somebody, it's one of my favorite things is when you first meet somebody and you're starting to unravel who they are, not even just sexually, but in general, because people are like infinitely interesting to me. So when I start like meeting somebody for the first time and like dis discovering, undressing them for who they are and seeing like what's underneath and all that stuff, it's like really interesting for me. But sometimes you'll meet this weird person right where you'll ask them like so what are you into and they go like whatever and you're like oh come on like tell me what come on like i just don't play with me tell me what you're really into and then they're like literally anything like i am down for anything and everything there is not a single thing that i would not let you do and then you go uh <laughs> like you're playing right like you're just you're just like you're, you're like you just you know what what do you mean by that like what are, what are you talking about and then she'll go like if you wanted to eat me with a fork and knife, it would be okay. And then you go, oh, well, that's not what I thought. That's not what I thought you would. That's that's kind of next level. That's I don't not into that. That's concerning. That's really concerning. You should always have hard stops. And I get it. If you're into like a lot of weird shit, that's fine. But it is weird, you know. Like it's okay to have a stop point. Hashtag reblogs this from myself to say and also the people who don't do want to hear it are nervous to just outright ask uh nobody's asking in general where are you in general where you're even posting something like this and and then you're going like oh boy why don't people want to know about my kinks where are you dude what what the fuck like i still have to coax fetish questions out of curious parties even though ask me about my opinions on human sexuality who where are you having these conversations like are you in like a group chat are you in like a twitter space where people are just like oh tell me about your weird kinks and nobody wants to ask you because you're fat i don't even know understand why this is even a thing where are you going where people are even asking you this shit out and then by the way if you're trying to get people to ask you this question that's boring dude i hate it when people do that shit like just showing up and they're just dropping the car keys on the table and it's like oh wow look the mercedes logo but nobody wants to bring it up so you start like shaking the car keys like oh, I don't know. like or you when you get a new tattoo and you're like ah oh, oh my arm is just kind of itchy from that from uh you know just you know, living life i guess and the big tattoo right there and nobody wants to ask you about it because nobody gives a fuck but you want somebody to ask you about it because you just got a new tattoo it's probably just like that um basically tattooed my forehead it's not sexualized 
I'm not sexualized because I, I'm weird and fat. Not being used as a resource cause sex is scary, heavy topic for too many. Okay, I, I just like, it's such a weird thing to talk about. I don't even know if this has anything to do with you being fat. It just has used, like, if you're just weird, just say that, dude. And if you want to talk about sex, and like, go talk about it with somebody that, like, actually wants to talk to you about it. Don't just, like, force people to talk about it and blame it on the fact that you're fat because nobody wants to hear you say it. I don't know how many times I've broken a piece of furniture. The heirloom lock, the, the heirloom, the heirloom rocker at my parents' house, a love seat at my besties, numerous chairs, and an outdoor sofa in the middle of a party once. Knocked me on my ass. I just, I'm sorry to say this, dude, but if you're so fat that you're breaking furniture on the regular, like, one piece of furniture might be okay. Like, maybe it's just like a one-off. You just sat on, like, a really piece of, like, a really old piece of wood or something like that or, like, a lawn chair. I know a lot of people have problems with those. Like, okay, fine. But, like, dude, are you really going to sit here? How many, like... A rocker at your parents' house, a love seat, which is crazy, dude. Love seats are literally made for, like, extra, you know what I'm talking about? Like, there's a reason why they're called love seats, okay? And then they're talking about that. You're saying chairs, numerous chairs, which is crazy. Like, numerous means you literally don't even know how many chairs you broke anymore. Because if this, if this was, it could literally be a number. It could just be, like, two chairs. No, you had to say numerous. So you've lost count at this point, okay? And outdoor sofas. Like, I don't know, man. At what point do we just start to lose weight and then stop breaking furniture? Why is this even a passive ability for you? Like, oh, there's a 40% chance that if I sit down on your shit, I might break it. Like, a critical, critical damage if I sit down on your chair. What are you talking about, bro? I don't want you to deteriorate the health points on my sofa, bro. You're, you're too fat to even be in my house. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But worse than that, it keeps you on high alert at all times. Finding seating and seat, finding seating that feels good and you know will support you isn't easy, but but it is like most most shit is most shit for normal people is gonna fit them like most shit. So the fact that this person is saying like oh man it just sucks a lot of dick that I have to go out of my way to find furniture that will actually fit me. Why? What are you doing? Like how are you living your life where this is just something that you just tolerate? This shouldn't be normal for you. Like this shouldn't be like a. Oh, I just need to go out of my way to find certain clothing items that cer certain like furniture items that will be able to fit me. Nah, dude, this shouldn't be a thing. You should have the ability to like just sit down on stuff and not break it or have like a 40% chance of just destroying it. It isn't easy, but brands like, okay, whatever this is, I guess cozy or something are making me feel a little more hopeful. Each individual seat is rated for 400 pounds. How fat are you? Can we just talk about that? Put the number. Let me see the number real quick. Throw out the number. How big are you? If you're sitting there going, I guess this is enough. Like, I guess 400 pounds per piece is enough for me, uh, I guess. Like, the you want your furniture to be durable because maybe at one point you're going to have two, three people on your furniture, sure. But if you're sitting there and you're going, each piece, gotta, each piece has got to be rated up to 400 pounds is insane to me, bro. You are on a next level of fat if 400 pounds is, like, decent. That's crazy because, look at they're making me feel a little more hopeful. Each interval, this, is, this may not even be enough for this person. Like 400 pounds is light. So anyway, each individual, each individual seat is rated 400 pounds. And I feel free to flop down a good book anytime. But, huh, nobody's reading books anymore, bro. Nobody reads books, okay? I hate to say it. There are people that read other things like articles and like descriptions. But nobody is reading books. But anyway, fine, whatever. I feel safer and more free to let my mind wander and I really I really be persistent when I don't have to be on alert at all times. Oh man, like I, you should never really have that like problem, dude. Like do you have this problem with like everything that you you sit on or like lay on in your entire life like beds, chairs, obviously, like why what this shouldn't be something that you have to deal with, dude. I, I'm sorry. This is not normal. Um what makes you feel safe? And do you think our thin friends are thinking of us when shopping for furniture? No, nobody's doing that shit. Nobody ever was going like, hey, um, hey, mom, before we buy this sofa, like, you know, Aunt Margaret's going to come over and she's fucking, she's kind of fucking massive. And you go, ah, oh, damn, you're right. Margaret, big as fuck. Damn. Is there a way you could put like adamantium frames in this, 
in this piece of furniture real quick because Aunt Margaret, I don't even know if we can even quantify her weight based off of numerical value. We're probably going to have to judge it based off of like the sheer, like the, the size and girth of the woman. Like there's no other, there's a, I don't even think there's a number of scaling system that would be sufficient in order to like accurately size her out. But okay, I, let me see what the uh, furniture looks like. Okay. <laughs> Looks like some sim furniture. How much is this? How much is this, dude? <gasps> Get the fuck out of here, bro. Can, you guys can't see the price. Hold on. Dude, this shit is literally $2,910. Where are you putting this, first of all, dude? This is this is rent. for This is rent for like two months for like a lot of people. This is insane, bro. You Like, think about the circumstance you have to put yourself in, okay? You're so fat. That you have like sized yourself out of most furniture because the chances of you breaking that furniture is pretty high, okay? And then because of that information, you have to now you have to now find furniture that is going to be impervious to the amount of force that you present upon your buttocks when it hits the sofa, and you have to go out of your way and find like giant and large pieces of furniture that probably cost three or four times more. Like how much is a sofa realistically, right? I got one out in my my pile right now. I think that one cost around 600 bucks. It's a big one. It's a big brown one, right? I bought it from Bob's Discount Furniture. 800 588 to 300 and fine today. And that was about 600 bucks, maybe a little bit less depending on if you count the delivery and shit like that. I I couldn't even imagine spending $3,000 because your sofa needs to be adequately sized in order to appropriately fit you and then also not break. Can you imagine like the guy at the the guy at the furniture store is like the buying points for the sofa is like, yeah, you know, it's comfortable, it's soft. It's going to, you know, it's going to be able to accompany a lot of people and you know, I just I just think this is probably the right one for you and you go, "Yeah, um but like what's the what's the what's the capacity?" And you're like, "Oh, the amount of people? Like the amount of people that you can hold? I'm probably like 6, 7 people." easily six seven people easily yeah uh not really like the amount of people but the amount of human like why what do you mean like the amount of human like what are you talking about like you're stacking people on top of each other what do you mean like i mean like i'm fat as fuck like i'm a you know what i'm saying like give me like how much can each how much can each section withstand in terms of the sheer girth of a human being like if I, let's say for instance i was massive and I sat down, am I breaking a piece if I sit down on it? Do I, do I, do I got to kind of be like a polar bear that's like trying to skate across ice and they like lay themselves out to try to like distribute the weight across the ice evenly to, to, to ensure they don't fall through the ice? Do I have to do that or can I just sit down on your sofa and it won't break? Can I do that or is it like, how much is it? Price isn't a, price isn't a problem for me, honestly, because I know that I'm big as shit. So I have to go out of my way to find things that are, you know, going to fit me appropriately. It's just like... You shouldn't have to deal with this. You should just, you just shouldn't. I'm sorry to say it. Um, not normal. Not normal. Not normal. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Um, if you en if you watched today's video and you uh, got to the end here, um, leave it down below by typing in spoon. I forgot what I was eating with this. Uh, what was I eating with this? Yogurt? I think yogurt, but I lick my things clean. So hold up, <laughs> hold up now, hold up. And as you see, it's not a plastic spoon. This is a silverware. It's not actually silver, but that's what people call it. I'm feng shui about the things that I put in my mouth, but uh, spoon, write down spoon down below and I'll know how much of a beautiful, amazing, spectacular, awesome, just uh, outrageously amazing person. And I do want to talk about how amazing you are because you are the epitome of somebody that that does the right thing and is working on themselves on a daily basis to bestow upon themselves a happy, healthier, beautiful life that's going to be filled with uh, uh, beautiful people and beautiful, amazing, amazingness. And I know you know how to read, which is awesome. I think knowing how to read is like really, really outrageously amazing. So thank you for knowing how to read. You're an amazing person. You smell amazing today. I think that your hands are perfectly moisturized. And I think that your elbows are also really nice. I want to lick your eyebrows. Anyway, uh, if you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. And uh, we're probably live, probably. So if you want to check me out being live, we're usually live on this channel at around 6 p.m. EST. And we're probably chilling for like four hours. So if you want to join up on that live, we're probably live at the time that's making this video. Probably um, see if you want to join up. Anyway, um, follow my Instagram, Twitter, and all this other stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 